Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. I'm Billy Epperhart, and on this show, you're going to hear from industry leaders in business, real estate, and investing. Our Wealth Builder coaches and myself are excited to teach you how to make sense of making money for making a difference. Okay, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this week's Wealth Builders Podcast. I think I can safely say I have my favorite guest on with me today. And who might that be? (laughs) My amazing (laughs) husband, Dave Metcalf. You're so amazing. (laughs) Well, we are really looking forward to this podcast because Mm -hmm. uh, we've been studying this out in our personal life, and we really felt like this was a great thing to share early in the year and uh, ending 2023 to kind of look into uh, this coming year and also in preparation for the Wealth Builders Conference, which has uh, the tagline or the theme of a time such as this, or such a time as this. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the way to say it. So uh, anyway, I want to welcome all of you and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you, our amazing Wealth Builders family. And just a reminder that we do have the Wealth Builders Conference coming up in February. You don't want to miss this. And if you're not yet registered, go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events and get registered. All right. So Dave, how about if you introduce the topic that we're going to be talking about today? Certainly. We are talking about five biblical aspirations toward a quality life. It's really wonderful, and it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's a pretty easy read, and should we read the verse? Yeah, let's start out with that. Okay, verse 11, it says, And to aspire to live quietly, and to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent upon no one. Yeah, that is, it's a short, you might say a short verse in a way, but it is power packed. And I'm really drawn to verses like this that lay out the steps of how to kind of achieve something mm-hmm. that that the Bible is sharing with us that God is getting across to us. And in this, there are five steps or biblical steps or aspirations where God is saying, hey, if you follow these, you will have a quality life. And so, Dave, maybe explain uh, what an aspiration is based on. Sure. If, when you want to aspire to something, it's like ambition. And these uh, five things that you described are actually like building blocks. And they're building upon a foundation that Paul actually laid out in the first uh, 12 verses. And that was, for example, pleasing God. Mm-hmm. So our life should be pleasing God. And that's really coming out of a love motivation for him Mm -hmm. and not fear. Right, not uh, works-based. Not works-based, but love. And then that's verse one and two. And then secondly, in laying the foundation, Paul says that we should live in holiness. And holy, uh, the word holy is really a great word. It's first found in the Old Testament, Hebrew, and it just means uncommon. So Mm -hmm. when God said to Moses, I'm holy, he was telling Moses, I'm uncommon. I'm not what you're used to. And what you experienced in Egypt and all that, I'm, I'm very uncommon. I think that's actually helpful to describe at the beginning of this because we can so easily get into that works mentality and disqualify ourselves based on potentially behavior or mistakes that we've made, made. And then we, you know, God's not disqualifying us because he's looking at the blood of Jesus, the finished work on the cross. But we can disqualify ourselves when we're not identifying with that finished work. So I really appreciate you explaining that. Sure. And when we have that as a foundation, what we're really experiencing is the quality of life that Jesus came to offer in the first place. He was very uncommon. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, when I, when Jesus said, I come to give you life, that word life, he actually is saying, I'm giving you the same quality of life that I have. I'm very uncommon, and I want to give you that uncommon quality of life in abundance. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that Paul sets up as a foundation for these five uh, building blocks that you're talking about is he sets it up as in the context of love. So in verse 9 through 12, specifically verse 9, he says, you've been taught by God to love. This is really important because we may not have experienced 
taught by love in our own personal lives. We, we might have had a different kind of a background, and everybody has their own family, their own culture. But the beauty of God's love teaching us is, first of all, it's not our love having to perform and figure out how to love people. It's actually God's love. And we don't have to go looking to try to stir it up because Roman 5, 5, Romans 5, 5 says that God's love is poured into us. So he fills our little love tank heart. And then that love of God can actually love others. Yeah. And that's why he can say that you've been taught by God. God teaches us how to love because as a good father, he he lets us know, hey, this is this is my love and this is how you can love others. Yeah, and I, I like that foundation too of starting with receiving God's love for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we are our harshest critic. Mm -hmm. And when we see ourselves through that blood of Jesus, the love of God, the finished work of the cross, then we can open our hearts to receive love. And then from that, we just spill out love to others. That's right. God's love is activated in three ways. First, he loves us to life. We, we weren't even alive. We, we were just like True. totally out there. And he loved us. He drew us to himself. He loved us into life. We become a new creation. Then he wants us to experience his love, which is really wonderful because that, that takes care of us and sets us on the right path and then give that love away. Mm -hmm. And getting into the little aspiration building blocks, mm -hmm. it's all love-based. That's so good. All right, Dave, let's start with, well, first of all, let's remind everybody what the five are, and then we can hit them one at a time. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so the first one is to live quietly. In other words, be content. The second is mind your own affairs. Mm -hmm. The third is work with your hands. The fourth is walk properly before outsiders. And the fifth is be dependent on no one. And this is talking about finances, being self-supporting. Yes. All right. So, Dave, let's take it away with number one. Okay, number one. Here we go. It's living quietly. And another way to look at that is being content. One of the verses that we've talked about um, over the last year has been Isaiah 119 which says, if you're content and if you're obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So people, when they're content in the Lord, it changes everything. And God's people, it doesn't mean you live quietly like your mouth is shut. Right. Because we are to be an influence. We are to be a witness by our life. So we are that, that powerful, positive voice of influence in the community. What this is really saying is not keep your mouth shut. It's, it's just saying be content mm -hmm. and be peaceful about the way you live your life. Yeah, I was looking up the in the dictionary the definition of content, and it is about leaving, uh, living a peaceful life. Now, we don't want to mix this up with not having some ambition or like desire to do more. This isn't, I'm content, I'm going to sit back and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we are content on the inside and peaceful. Yes, yeah, so when you're content on the inside, that means you're not striving. You're not just out there in an anxious way, uh, striving to grasp things. Mm -hmm. But God is bringing things to you for you to benefit, and you're living out of that place of restful content. That's great. All right. So number one, that was live quietly content. Number two, this is interesting, is mind your own affairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is great. I looked this up in the Spirit-Filled Life Notes, which we study out of quite a bit. And it's uh, this is what it says about it. Strive to live quietly, not gossiping, but tending to your own work. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's a good one right there. <laughs> well, this says to me, one of the things it says is that leaders need to really manage themselves. Now, the Holy Spirit will help you, but Jesus even said in Luke 17, 3, he said, take heed to yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, look out after yourself and uh, pay attention to that. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, I do too. And then when we're essentially looking after what has been entrusted to us, we also don't blame others for any lack of results or make excuses. Mm -hmm. We just essentially are minding our own affairs and we're not blaming life and circumstances 
kind of like the victim mentality. Have you, you know, you've probably been around people in the workplace that everything's somebody else's fault. Like right. The reason why they're not doing well in their business affairs, <laughs> you know, oh, the, the whatever happened, the copier didn't work or the sun was in my eyes, it, it, all these ridiculous excuses. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking of this too uh, this last week. I was just talking to the team about, you know, how it's important that we surround ourselves with people that do self-manage, meaning that um, we, of course, this is about us too. We don't want to be a person that sits back and does nothing unless our boss or someone is like, you know, hey, are you staying on top of your stuff? Uh, we want to be those people that we work and in, and in, in really try to find answers uh, or keep moving things forward in a way that somebody doesn't have to come and keep prodding us along. And I think that's a really good virtue. And it's something that we definitely um, aspire to, or, you know, I hold that in high esteem with the team when I see that they are self-managing, that they are going forward. But it's also a measurement that we look for in the people that maybe we've hired to help us uh, or to come alongside us. Do they sit and do nothing until we have to remind them or are they out bringing solutions to the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. It also helps you not to compare yourself with other people. Mm -hmm. Just kind of stick to your own self. Yeah. That's always a challenge. I mean, the disciples, they're talking to Jesus, like finding out maybe what their life might look like. And then they're like, well, well, what about your buddy, John? Is he going to live or get killed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus, he just says, hey, just pay attention to yourself. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> just focus on what God has called you to do and move forward right. in that. That's really good, Dave. Yeah. All right. So number three is work with your hands. Uh, work is a blessing. When we work, God has something to bless. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting, too, when you go back in Genesis and, you know, Adam and Eve, they were given the task of tending and taking care of the garden. Yeah, they really were. And that's not just like working with your hands is like the end result. Because what comes first is passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways I like to look at this too, uh, actually the thought just hit me, mm -hmm. is that when you're really clear about your purpose and your passion, your hands will be the extension of that work. That's good. And it's important for us to work with our hands, which means that we're, we're actually working through our purpose and passion. Yeah, that's really good. And that, and that is how... Um, we were just talking about this actually in our business coaching about how that really drives that vision, that purpose, kind of everything else points up in and through that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really good point. I'm glad that hit you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of scriptures here too that we're going to share with you. Um, I didn't put the reference there. You probably know the reference, but this is out of the New International Version. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. And that leads into you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And then do you want to share, like there's a, another verse in the Amplified. Yeah. And this one is in Ephesians and it says this, uh, the thief who has become a believer must no longer steal, but instead he must work hard, making an honest living, producing that which is good with his own hands so that he will have something to share with those in need. Mm -hmm. That's really important. So you're not just gathering to yourself, but you're helping others. But also when you're, when you're working and making an honest living, what it means is you're really not taking shortcuts and being sloppy or inappropriately doing things. Yeah. So it's really good. It's just a good, honest living, you know, plus you're not looking over your shoulder. You're not worried about if someone's coming to track you down, like you didn't do something correctly, but yeah, that's yeah. a good point. That leads to a peaceful life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four is walk properly before outsiders. When the idea behind this is when unbelievers see our lives, they will recognize and honor God, who is our source of godliness. 
Um, here's a scripture that I'm going to share with you. This is out of the Amplified, and it says, Conduct yourself with wisdom in your interactions with outsiders, non-believers. Make the most of each opportunity, treating it as something precious. Let your speech at all times be gracious and pleasant, seasoned with salt, so that you will know how to answer each one who questions you. Mm-hmm. That's a good verse. That is a good verse. <clears throat> And then Matthew 5, 16, this is in the American Standard Version, says this, Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And this is very consistent with what Jesus said, that love would actually be the fruit that people would know, the unbelievers, the outsiders, Mm -hmm. they would know that we're his disciples. So when we're living our life as a light, uh, when you love, you know, like love actually replaces all the commandments because you're loving God, first of all, of course. You're loving yourself, like uh, the fourth commandment, take the day off. And then all the other eight commandments are all based upon love because if you love somebody, you're not going to steal from them. You're not going to cheat them and kill them and, Mm -hmm. and rob them. And so really that's how our light can shine is just letting that love of God through the work of our our hands uh, glorify him. That's awesome. And Dave, do you want to take number five? Okay, this is number five. This is the last building block here (laughs) we're talking about. And this is be dependent on no one. This is quite a statement. It is. I think it's really a great statement. I know you're going to have a lot to say because you help so many people actually become uh, thriving in their own uh, work and prosperity. But essentially, financially, we're, we are encouraged to be self-supporting. Now, some of the people in the Bible, we find out that, that they were like living off the charity of others. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of like, um, you know, like wanting a handout. Paul talks about this in Second, Second Thessalonians 3. And he actually says that we're not supposed to be like that. And there's also people that we're just kind of like camping out, waiting for the imminent return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so they just checked out of life. And then they, well, you got to eat. So then they'd want a handout. They'd want food. We got to stay somewhere. Then they want to stay somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) So Paul, Paul, you know, you know, we are to occupy till Jesus comes. And even that word occupy in the Greek means business. Mm -hmm. We're We're to conduct business. And we need to actually, now there's times in our life where we do need to depend on somebody, Mm -hmm. and we understand that, of course. So we're not here to say that there's not ever a time in your life where you're not needy or someone can't help you. Uh, That's not true at all. The the truth is, though, having an ongoing employment or investment strategies helps us actually become more self-sufficient with the wealth that God wants to give us Mm -hmm. so that we can fulfill his will in our life. And that's the whole design. Uh, Wealth and the idea of prosperity is having the resources necessary to accomplish his will in our life and to even build wealth that makes a difference. So if we're not building wealth that helps make a difference because we're dependent on somebody else, it doesn't really quite work well. And of course, another idea is living within your means. It's easy in the in this day and age to get, I think, extended, kind of like, uh, I heard someone talk about get their heads over their skis. I'm not a real big ski yeah. guy, but <laughs> yeah. I kind of get that. <laughs> so financially, when you when you live within your means and you have an, an investment strategy, that really helps you not get dependent. Yeah, and when we think about wealth builders and the call on Billy and Becky's life, with wealth builders, it, it's really about this and building a legacy, being dependent on no one. And um, as we share with people, you know, real estate strategies, business strategies, investment strategies through uh, wealth builders, it's leading towards helping us to be financially self supporting and then leading that into generations. It's helping our families be self-supporting. And uh, the three X, the triple X factor that that God gave Billy is really all about this moving from, okay, I need to get out of debt to moving into, all right, now let's create passive income so that uh, I'm not dependent only on my W-2 income, all the way into the third X where it's from the overflow 
that we are able to put that towards uh, the kingdom of God. Yeah, and going into the new year, that's a great place to start. That's a new product available, right? It's going to be launched at the Wealth Builders Conference, Whoa. and it's amazing. <clears throat> Billy did 15 sessions and he taught on things uh, that I had not heard before. He's such a deep well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot about the laws of wealth. It's an amazing product. It's got a study guide with it and we are actually getting it ready so that you can do small groups with it and churches can uh, connect with this product and create small groups to help their, can you imagine churches getting a hold of this? <laughs> That's amazing. And learning how to build wealth God's way um, outside of just W-2 income. Think how powerful that is to helping us bring that transformation and having the influence, we like to say it like this, from neighborhoods to nations, one yeah. wealth builder at a time. That is so good. You know, this uh, this week I was talking to um, Freddie down in Arizona. He's yeah. you know, part of, one of the ministers that has been around um, wealth builders, and he's also gone through wealth building strategies. But as a pastor, he said, you know, churches need to have a wealth building culture. Amen. And this product actually, you know, would help a lot of communities within the body of Christ to really get a, a wealth building culture. So, I, you know, I just I had this idea pop that what about businesses? What if businesses helped their employees, you know, like take them through something like the triple X factor mm -hmm. and help their employees have this perspective? Right. Oh my goodness. It would just bring increase in so many areas. That'd be so good. So a business owner could get that package, go through it themselves, and then help their employees yes. go through it. That'd be great. Wow. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it. All right. So Dave, you've got a nice recap here that kind of brings all this together. Okay. The great recap here is the Passion Translation. And so I'll read you the Passion Translation verse. It says, aspire to lead a calm and peaceful life as you mind your own business and earn your living, just as we've taught you. By doing this, you'll live an honorable life, influencing others and commanding respect of even the unbelievers. Then you'll be in need of nothing and not dependent upon others. Wow, that is so awesome. And all this is with a godly motivation to please God and love others. Yeah. Wow, this has been fun. Dave, thanks so much oh, thanks for, for being on me. the podcast with us and today. Thanks everyone for joining us. Yes, we love and appreciate you so much. Uh, Billy and Becky are so excited to see all of you at the upcoming Wealth Builders Conference. Just a reminder that you can uh, join us by live stream or in person. Go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events. God bless you and make it an amazing rest of the day. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Builders Podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review the show. You want to learn more about who we are? Visit our website at wealthbuilders.org and check us out on Facebook. We'll see you next time.